uh, started our adventure to make it down to Colorado, to Loveland for the Mountain West Overland Expo. Uh, late start today and only have made it about an hour into Washington to Tulalip, if I've said that correctly. And uh, ears were starting to kill us, so we have stopped and picked up some hearing protection. Hopefully we will still have some hearing by the time we get there. We are not going down to Oregon, hopefully down through Montana, Utah, that sort of area. So we're going to hit some new ground, figure out where we land up, so stay tuned. Well, it was a long drive yesterday. Uh, like I said, we got a late start, but we did catch uh, or make some good distance. We got over 800 kilometers and made it to here, this awesome little lake, which is right on the border of Idaho and Montana. Um, got a long drive yet to do today. Uh, so we're just packing up here. First night in the Condor Overland 2. Uh, super impressed with that tent. I'm not exactly sure what they have done with this mattress but it is way more comfortable than any other tent I've slept in. No need for an additional air mattress in this tent, as I've always needed before. The blackout fabric was awesome. I had it all zipped up, uh, very little to no condensation, uh, and actually super warm. Uh, so, like I said, we're going to get ourselves packed up, hit the road here as quick as we can, because... I'm guessing we got at least as many kilometers or miles to do today as we did yesterday. Good morning. It is about 9 a.m. in the morning, uh, middle of nowhere, Montana. Actually, I have no idea where we are. Um, we got lost twice yesterday on back roads. Also had a mechanical breakdown, which was just an electrical issue. We sorted out after about an hour and a half in the Walmart parking lot at 10 p.m. Arrived here at 2 a.m. Uh, so got about seven hours sleep. That should be enough to get us out of here because we are deep in the woods. We ended up on a single track trail that just kept going to nowhere. Uh, and we're still like 11 hours away from Loveland. So we'll not be making it to the Overland show today, but that's okay. We've got Saturday, Sunday. So, so long as we get out of here, don't have any more issues, fuel, gas, I don't know, 13 hours. Hopefully we'll be to Loveland. They'll get us there this evening. So uh, wish me luck. Gonna get back on the road. 
we began our third day of driving adventure, leaving Montana and heading into Wyoming, my expectations were that it was all going to be just flatland, much like Canada's Saskatchewan. But those expectations were almost immediately shattered as the highway dropped into these amazing canyons surrounded by cliffs and endless beautiful sky. It was a rugged beauty that I just didn't expect to be offered by Wyoming. And it didn't end there as we headed into Yellowstone National Park. Here we are met with these geysers. This is all superheated water and steam from volcanic activity that is only just a couple of miles below the surface, creating these amazing geothermal features and incredibly dangerous lava mud pots is the best I can describe them. I could spend all day here, but it's back on the road and this time I'm again in the passenger seat, just soaking in all that Wyoming has to offer. All right, well, quick update here as we are cruising along on day three of the trying to get to Colorado road trip. And from there, has been on the road again today, Sean? Uh, uh, six? Six and a half? Yeah, five hours, 39 minutes, 49 seconds. And we've got how many kilometers? 270.64. How many do we have to go? No. <laughs> like 1,200? Uh, 800. So, yeah, so 800 more to go. Yeah. So again, we're doing a great job of getting to where we need to be. But on the bright side, Yellowstone National Park is freaking gorgeous. So, what do you do when you're in a tunnel shot? Hold your breath. Turn on the headlights. So it's a road trip without running out of gas on the side of the highway in the middle of Wyoming. I can stand in the middle of the highway and there's legitimately no vehicles. Good thing for spare fuel. Despite our very best intentions, it was another very long day finally arriving in Loveland, Colorado at 1 a.m. in the morning. All right, 2,500 kilometers completed in the old FJ Cruiser. Uh, it made it amazingly. I hope it makes it home, that is the question, but we have arrived at the Mountain West Overland Festival. This place is packed to the gills. It is Saturday, not to be unexpected. So let's get in there and see what it looks like. Sean is going to drive somebody else's Jeep around this track on Kenda tires. I believe that's what we're doing here. And away we go. Imagine if we drove all the way down here on one of these. With air conditioning. Right? And a quiet engine. I mean, that'd be sweet. And probably good fuel economy. Let's see what the pitch gets to here. 17 degrees. Right. 20 degrees. That's 25 fast, actually. 25 degrees. I don't think I've ever been this sideways in a vehicle. <laughs> Yet I'm totally comfortable. That's because you're on the high side. <laughs> now you know how I normally feel. Good job. That's kind of fun. All right, we get to do the articulation ramp here next. No two wheels though. They could have built these bigger. <laughs> oh, oh, almost! There she goes. <laughs> All right, I'm here at the uh, Lightner booth, and Lightner is releasing this brand new product. This is their new gear carrier and their new rooftop tray. These things are both super exciting products. Um, this here is secured and locked on, so there's no getting it off. It's side 
uh, entry, so there's no having to reach up on top or take the thing off to get your gear. They've got mounts for your Max Tracks or your Roto Packs, so whenever you're trying to find a place to put these things, they can go right on top of your pods. We've got one here on this F250 350. You can see the Roto Packs mounted up there. They've got these amazing skirts that make it look super OEM. Here's one for the Tacoma. I personally think this is probably one of the nicest racks that I have seen on a Tacoma. And here is Bernard Leitner to go over just some of the new features of this new rack. This comes right off, and that is our mounting plate. Right. And pretty universal with those uh, those angles yes, on there. Yes, we've want tried it on everything we can find, yeah. and it's not a problem. I That's haven't found cool. a rack it doesn't fit on. But so never. This is our new rack, and the cool thing about this is it's completely hollow all the way around, so the Deutsch connectors, the big connectors, are actually inside here, so you never have to cut, solder, wire, connect anything funny. You can just use the factory waterproof connectors, and they're always hidden inside. Sweet. Then you can obviously finish off the last couple of inches with, with our the wire locks, wire, which we already make those. Yep. And then the next thing we did was people are always asking, well, I want my load bar here and I want to carry something, a box or something. So you can slide this anywhere. It's completely infinite. Yeah. And then if you want to add a load bar, it just lifts out. And then you can add as many load bars as you want. You can put them anywhere you want. And then they just have these custom fasteners that slide out. And you tighten them down, you're done. Yeah. And these extrusions, we tested every extrusion on the market. We made them twice as stiff as anything on the market. Oh, yeah. And of course, Lightner is making that tray compatible with their ACS forged rack. So you can put it on the back uh, as well as on the cab. And they will be coming out with many more variations for different trucks in the near future. This is the new uh, Metal Arc tent. Uh, what they've done is this fabric here is coming out with the Rainfly, so it's making it immensely bigger inside. Oh, let's crawl in here and look at that. Now, the old one I just fit, but this one has got perfect amount of space to lie down and in. If I stick my head around this way, with this fabric coming down here, loads of space, feet clear at the bottom. So for a very compact tent, this small upgrade, instead of having the fabric come down like this, has uh, really made the space available in this tent um, dramatically better. This is the Sparrow 2.0 that has you can see inside here these struts running across and down there you'll see the HVAC ports. Um, those struts allow for a roof rack to go onto the Sparrow tent. Uh, I believe that is a first in this style of tent. It also has the Linex coating, uh, so a little bit stronger of a, of a top and the LST blackout fabric as well. So this is the EGR powered tonneau on a Gladiator with the light rack and it fits on there nicely. Sean's waiting to push the button. Push the button. Man. So apparently one of the smallest canisters on the market. Um, polycarbonate so it doesn't dent and it bolts into the track uh, which also gives it I can't remember what he said but a really really high payload um, static is 700 dynamic is about 300 okay yeah cool yep. do you have to have that front box or is it on the gladiator you do because the filler tank on the side so it comes in so much you see how wide our canister is right 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 if we went all the way back with this that canister would have to be in further and then these rails would be in further uh, and you wouldn't be able to be okay. over it and you'd lose all your space yes so ours integrates into the factory remote okay oh so when you okay. lock your vehicle We'll go. Right, cover. of course, turns this off. Turns the buttons off. Oh, that makes perfect yeah. sense. Yeah. Pretty good setup, I think. Uh, this is a solution for the gladiators that we haven't been able to find yet, where you can have the Lightner rack with a tonneau cover. So that's the EGR. What's it called again? EGR Roll Track. Awesome. I hope you enjoyed coming along our adventure down to the Overland Show in Colorado, but that's only halfway. 
we still need to get this old truck back home. We get some epic views, some tight trails, and of course, she doesn't always want to play nice. For today, we decided we'd get up early so we could get to Moab and get on the road. Not dilly-dally like we normally do.